Good evening. One of the prospects of drilling for shale glass in New York would bring in a bonanza. First off, the geology of shale limits how much gas could be produced from it, and therefore variations in the Marcellus shale would be reflected in the variations in gas production. That is, should horizontal drilling combined with hydraulic fracturing ever be permitted in our fair state? So let's look at some of the variables. To begin, a little background on the formation of Marcellus with all its variations. Here is North America 385 million years ago. The Marcellus was deposited in a shallow inland sea. The future New York is on the northern edge with the sea deepening into Pennsylvania. Being near the equator, the sea was subtropical and life was abundant at the surface. When plankton died, they settled down to the bottom of this Appalachian Sea. To the east, the mountain ranges cut off the sea from the open ocean, except far to the south. In this backwater, with poor circulation and no oxygen at the bottom, the panic debris did not decay away, but accumulated. Meanwhile, the Acadian mountains eroded, and rivers carried the sediment west to the sea. Here is a slice through that ancient Appalachian basin. Once the rivers reached the sea, the sands were left near the shore, forming a thick wedge, the, the Catskill Delta. Finer silts were carried further west, and the finest clays were carried furthest west, where they settled out with the plant debris, forming an organic-rich black mud. We will see these trends in the Marcellus of New York, with thicker, with poorer organics in the east, and thinner with richer organics in the west. In the west, this black mud was buried and heated, turning into black shale. As the mud became shale, uh, the plant matter became carriage, which is like asphalt, thick La Brea tar pits. As the black shale was buried deeper and hotter, organic matter progressively breaks down into oil, natural gas liquids, methane, and in the end, carbon dioxide and water. Each is less valuable than the last. Methane mixed with natural gas liquids is called immature gas. Methane alone is called mature gas, essentially what is sold as natural gas. And once methane begins to break down into carbon dioxide and water, it is called overmature gas. Note that as the temperature rises, the methane breaks down abruptly. In Pennsylvania, this is called the line of death this is how the gas formed in the, our local back shales hundreds of millions of years ago. By now you've heard that get the ancient gas out of the rocks. First the well is drilled down vertically to the shale and then horizontally within it. Finally the shale must be fractured to release the gas. But shales in the Marsalis vary and are not all equally endowed with gas. You can't just drill anywhere and expect to find enough gas to turn a profit. Here are the more important variables that affect how much gas can be produced at a wellhead after the shale is fracked. To make a profitable well, you need all the ingredients in the right amounts. These first four are more important. To create enough gas, you need enough organics that are heated enough but not too much. And to collect enough gas, you need a shale layer that is thick enough and deep enough. Next, we'll look at each variable in turn. It is the organic matter in shells that breaks down to create gas. If there is not enough organics, there won't be enough gas. These rock samples were coiled from a well. Here you can see black shells interbedded with gray siltstones. Black shells have more than 2% organic matter, but much of Marcellus is gray. It is the exceptionally rich Marcellus that produces profitably. Total organic carbon measures all the carbon derived from organic matter excluding only the carbon from carbonates such as calcium. The New York State Geological Survey measured TOC profiles across the shale layers in dozens of wells throughout the southern tier, selecting one or more deep wells from each of these counties. These results are for the most organic rich samples from each of the Marcellus profiles. This is an update of their 2009 map, which is in the ESCOS. Highest organic contents are in the central tier, particularly in these two regions. Variations here are typical of the Appalachian Basin, with lower concentrations in the east 
where the organics were diluted by the abundant sediments from the Arcadian Mountains. Prospects for gas don't look so good in the East, in and around the Catskills, but elsewhere around the southern tier, it looks like there was enough organics to create gas. For the wider region, here is an estimate of total organic carbon based on the radioactivity of the rocks. Generally, the more uranium there is in the shale, the more organic carbon. In New York, we see the same trend as the last slide with highs here and here. And south of the border, the TOC is highest in the west, where gas production is poor. Alone, high organic carbon does not make a profitable well. In a stack of sedimentary rocks, each layer is heated hotter than the one above it. And therefore, the gas prospects for each should be considered separately. This is a temperature map for the Devonian age layer, which includes the Marcellus. Rocks that were hottest are in red, those coolest in blue. Oh, I have added the approximate locations for the three zones for, of immature with liquid and gas, mature with gas alone, and overmature with carbon dioxide and water. In New York, most of the Marcellus has some gas. In Pennsylvania, most of the gas is in a region called the Sweet Spot. Just no, it is just north of this boundary, called the Line of Death by Engelder, because production drops off so steeply to the southeast. But there's no map, there is no data on this map to indicate where the Line of Death would extend into New York. However, if you look at this map from the S guys, most of the gas fields could be overcooked and have little or no gas. Again, I have labeled the three zones. It is worth noting that despite scattered drilling over decades, there never has been a productive well in or around the Catskills. These variations are typical of the Appalachian Basin, with the highest temperatures in the east, where the layers were deeply buried by the Catskill Delta. If a shale is rich enough for organics, and if the shale has been heated to within the gas window, then the next thing you need for a productive well is enough shale to frack. Fracking is the fracturing of a cylinder of rock around the well bore. The volume of gas produced increases as the volume of gas produced increases with the volume of the cylinder. To produce the most gas, you want the cylinder to be the largest that can fit within the target layer. Here is the geometry of that, with the Marcellus layer between two limestones. Remember your high school geometry. The volume of the cylinder is proportional to the square of the thickness, and the volume falls off from the sweet spot with the maximum thickness quite steeply at first. For example, if a layer is half as thick, then the volume fraction is one quarter as great as is the volume of gas released. One half the thickness, one quarter of the volume. As you saw on chips maps at the shale plays, this steep fall off in volumes results in very small sweet spots. Therefore, the thinner the shale, the poorer prospects for gas, going west, north, or east from the sweet spot. In the organic regions of the Marcellus here, the shale is mostly thinner than 100 feet. Comparing this with over 300 feet in the sweet spot, that's less than one-ninth as much gas. Depth and pressure also affect productivity. The Marcellus has natural spaces to store gas, both in the visible fractures and in the microscopic pores. The greater the depth, and therefore pressure, the more gas that can be compressed and squeezed into these spaces. Even if you have enough gas in the shale, you still must get it to the surface. Gas in the northeast Marcellus is over pressure, releasing a flood of gas at first, like carbon dioxide from soda when you first open the bottle. After the initial release of fra from the fractures, gas must be pushed out of the shale. This graph shows how the pressure increases this way, down into the ground, that way. This line is the pressure of, in the rock, and the second line is the pressure in a well filled with water. Pushing the gas is done by, a pre by the decrease in pressure from the rock to the well bore. The deeper the shale, the greater the difference. This differential is so important that in Pennsylvania, operators will take the trouble to drill on the hilltops rather than the valleys to gain the few hundred feet of extra pressure. Therefore, the shallower the share, the poorer the prospects for gas going east, west, north, and east from the sweet spot. 
As a rule, operators like to drill when the shale is deeper than 4,000 feet. In most of the southern tier, the Marcellus is shallower than that. To review, the important variables for gas production in the southern tier are high organic content, thermal maturity, thickness, and depth. Organic content in Marcellus is enough for gas production throughout most of the southern tier, but some of the Catskill is barren. Similarly, the thermal maturity of the shale was conducive to gas production throughout most of the southern tier, but the Catskills was overcooked. Thickness for the Marcel decreases, Marcella shale decreases northward with less volume for shale to frack, and depth decreases northward, providing less pressure. Just from these general considerations of geology, the prospects for gas production from the Marcellus does not look nearly as profitable in our southern tier as it does in the northern tier of Pennsylvania. In most of the New York, the Marcellus is thin and shallow. In this Catskill, barren and overcooked. Our best prospects are along a short stretch of the border, but even here, prospects are much further than farther south in the sweet spot. Certainly drilling for shale in New York will never reap the bonanza that it does in Pennsylvania. These regional trends should come as no surprise because this geology has been known since the beginning of the Marcellus play. For example, this fairway, that is the area where drilling would be profitable, is from a range resource presentation given over five years ago by its president and chief operating officer. Range Resources is the company that pioneered the Marcellus shale play back in 2004. This is only one of many similar maps from industry, geological surveys, and academia, as you will see in Lewis Hall. All show only a small Marcellus fairway up in New York. And one of the few maps that show a grander ferry, fairway stretching across the width of the southern tier, such as the one from the Eskice, the geology shows that they are wrong. Thank you.